What's up, family? You're tuned in to Real Ass Real Radio 104.1, your nightcap of comedy. My name is Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Okay, I'm going to let y'all know right now, as all guests tonight, James at Halloween Horror Nights with his wife and probably having sex on the Ghostbuster ride. Miguel is at the Sausage <laughs> Castle, probably looking at sausage. And Jeff Kaufman from the law office of Kaufman Lynn is flying back from Disneyland after doing his 19-mile run, which I don't even know why people even want to run that far that he can run 19 miles 19 miles bro consecutively consecutively. he's fat all that just fat and he run marathons like all the time and he's still fat that's why he's still fat yeah so man i got my brothers with me today man um join the virtual studio before i get to our host host uh special guest co-host we got chris alexander calix page dj and also has his own karaoke night every tuesday at v pizza what up chris how you doing? How you doing? What's hey? Can you have seen you in a minute? How you been, man? What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah, just know I came. It's gonna be me and you. Um, yeah, I'm working uh, on. It. I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I don't even know why I invited this, but uh, also I'm, I'm we got my question. my brother, man. Trollops tales opens for Godfrey out here on the road doing this day, man. I came Woods, one of Orlando's Ooh. own out in New York City. What's up, dude? What's up? You ain't listening to my TV credits late night. HBO, a gay network that I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I listen, because I ain't read up. Nah, it's all good. I was just joking around. Do you know, if, if we tell people all the time, we are the most unprepared show on this network. <laughs> I don't write anything. I, I be driving home from work. I be like, yo, daddy be a good thing to talk about. <laughs> I mean, but that's, but that's, I mean, listen, it's radio. You're in tra- you're in traffic in Orlando. You ain't got nothing else to do. If you listen to the radio, you don't got a, an auxiliary cord. Like clearly, your life's in shambles. So just listen to us. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yo, who still hook up to the auxiliary cord though? You ain't well, got I Bluetooth. Mean, I mean, most I mean, people. Listen, I sold my car almost five months ago, so I don't know what the people are doing these days. But well, Chris got a new car. Chris, so your new car ain't got Bluetooth. No, no, well, it does, but I still use the aux cord. Why? Because I like to charge my phone. <laughs> yeah, but you can charge your phone and Bluetooth to the, the radio. Like, I don't even have an auxiliary no, it thing. Automatically. As soon as I plug it in, it goes straight to. Wow. Wire, yeah, nah, dog. I, 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 I Bluetooth. I Bluetooth it all. Be I don't only I plug my phone up to charge it, but I can't tell you the last time I done aux cord it to the radio. I can't yeah. tell the last time I asked Cord to the radio, bro. That's like that's old car stuff, man. Step that's, your car that's, game up. That's what I used to do with my car. I used to have that little radio thing that you put it because you had a disc player and then you put the, the, the oh, you put the hold on, you put the disc in or the tape in? You put the tape in, you yeah, put the tape yeah. In. yeah, yeah, put the tape in, bro. That that, we done come out. a long way, yeah. Now nah, we done come a long way because you have put the tape in with the CD. Then after that, I came, I had a six disc changer. Then I had a 10 disc changer. Then I got the one where you could take your, your radio off and take it in the house so it wouldn't get stolen. I mean, I don't know you know nothing about that, bro. You use I do because I grew up life. in the 90s. I just texted Holly. This is we talk about this off air. I texted Holly when I said I was gonna text her, and she was like, My word, who is this? I don't have your number saved. And then I told who I was, and then she said like a thousand of laughing emojis. Um <laughs> But I don't know if she's there this weekend, but still let me know soon. All right. So you text somebody that you thought was your friend and they had no idea who you were. Oh, no, I never text Holly. I usually talk to her on Facebook. So I'm not like, oh. yeah. But you got a phone number. I do, because we had a phone conversation when we were writing on that TV show together. We had to, like, talk on the phone. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. man. Well, I was trying to school y'all on, on the ins and outs of, of st- car stereos, because because um, Chris just got a new car. Yeah. What kind of car you get? Uh, Santa Fe. You a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah. So. <laughs> I like women. Okay. Because that's the, the straw car. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, if y'all listen, I can't gay. So he can say that. <laughs> I can't say that. That's 100%. I can't can say, that. I can say that. They know I'm gay. No one was like, oh my God, a king. Yo, what, uh, what year is it? Uh, 2018. Oh, yeah. It probably still got an ox cord. Yeah, that's yeah. not even new. Yeah, that ain't new. It's yeah. new for me. Yeah, it's new for you. Yeah, because I don't what do you, wait. What cars. were you driving before? Uh, what 2004 uh, Sentra? 
Oh, this is weirdo for you. Yeah. 2004. Yo, yeah, your like car can almost vote. This is bad. <laughs> This thing got computers. Wait, your car, your car can almost like, drink. Hey. Your car can drink next year. Your car hey, hey. that car voted for George Bush. <laughs> your car, your car's old enough to drink and drive itself. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, like car. Next car, hey, oh, how your car do two tours in Nam, bro? <laughs> he said 2004. Yo, that's <laughs> wild, bro. I moved here 04. I Dang. went into the military in 04, so I get it. So you I didn't was, even hold up. So you didn't even own the car in 04. No. <laughs> I was still straight in 04. <laughs> That's how long 04 so, was. And so <laughs> I was moving to Orlando. I key went gay, and Chris was just going to the military. And his and your car was just being born. Wow. <laughs> That is hilarious, bro. That is hilarious. Hey, and I key, I done wrote, I wrote with the old car. The AC didn't work, so I Chris oh, yeah. had to pick me up one time, bro. Had the windows down, just. <laughs> of course, the AC didn't one. work. They just now invented AC in the inside the house. <laughs> they just got central air conditioning inside the house. They haven't figured out how to put it in the car. Oh, hey, <laughs> this dude had one of the big back ACs that you put in the window. He had one of them in the car. <laughs> that car, hey dog, and it which, used which, to it used to, it used to shake. It used to shake like his car would do the Cupid shuffle when we was right. going down the highway. That oh, car yeah. so rad. My car was tweaking. <laughs> Real. Oh, no. segregated. Oh, segregated. Your car was segregated. <laughs> <laughs> no, my Yo, car was on drugs. That's what it let was. Me, let me find out your car shot Dr. Martin Luther King. <laughs> 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 that, that car was in Selma. Oh. <laughs> no. You know your car's old when it drove. <laughs> Used to drive Rosa Parks when she missed the bus. <laughs> the car was right behind the bus. <laughs> hey, she hey, this car seat. was around. Nah, your car was around when gas was 99 cent, bro. Hey, <laughs> you could fill up the car for four dollars. For four dollars, but we happy you got a new car now. You enjoying the new car? Yeah, most definitely. So, yeah, I, I, I've been driving it all day going to and from schools you know oh yeah because you got all your kids right how many kids you got seven four i ain't will mills no i got four <laughs> okay i don't know your life hey hey i can't you know where he was driving to <laughs> to work <laughs> <laughs> unemployed ass <laughs> oh wait you on it oh yeah your wife is the is the is the the breadwinner yes she's the breadwinner yes but and he'll I, stay at home dad though yeah you're gonna he'll take stay at home dad. babies let me take care of the kids, yo. He yes. say they they fell in school, but he there. What is he? What does your <laughs> wife do? Uh, head unit coordinator in the hospital. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's good money. So, yeah. why are you looking there like you was gonna try to holler? I mean, listen, I live in New York by myself, and times are rough, so <laughs> <laughs> I need hey. someone to take care of me. Yo, yo, what, hey, uh, give me a guest that, spot. You, you, we, we can share. This dude. Speaking <laughs> of that, I can just had a milestone. You just celebrated something, my man. What did you celebrate? Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, September fifth was fourteen years of of bad decisions and oh, doing time. Yeah. <laughs> I and, started. And I, <laughs> I started in two thousand ten, so six years after his car. <laughs> <laughs> Six years after he got his car, I started doing comedy. Yo, the, the car older than uh, Akeem's comedy career, bro. Yeah. And I told Akeem, I said, hey, now that you here 14 years to celebrate, you got to go get some coochie. Oh, yeah. And I said, no, thank he you. He was like, no, nah, I quit comedy first. That's the did last you, thing on my list of things that I got to go get. Did you think you would make 14 years, though? Seriously, you think you make 14 years? Did you think so? Honestly... I don't, I never thought that I would get this far. It's so crazy because, like, you know how when you first start doing comedy, right? Like, the first thing you're just like, I want to make some money. Yeah. And then you start making money and you're like, I want to quit your day, my day job. And then you quit your day job and you're like, well, I want to make more money. <laughs> so, like, you're, you're not, your thing keeps, keeps getting farther and further. Like your goalpost or whatever. I think I did mine in reverse. So I just kind of have to like sometimes like I've had like a really bad comedy month just because mm -hmm. once I got I got told no from a lot of things I auditioned for, but then like sometimes you look back and you're just like twenty year old Akeem would look at 
my current career and be like, what? You did late night. You you toured with you did this. You did this. You're regular on that. Like you've done all these things. So like I feel like I've done a lot. Like I've done a lot of the things I've always wanted to do. But at the same time, I'm just like. I have to do comedy for a living. I quit my job seven years ago and blah, 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 blah. But it's just like, it's just, it doesn't seem like so long ago, but then really you start, don't. but then you go to like Facebook and Facebook shows you your memories and you read some of your memories and you're like, oh, I was dumb. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I don't know. I don't know if I ever thought I was going to make it this long, to be honest. I, I just started it after high school and I was just like, I'm the funny kid in high school. Yeah. And, I, and then, I, I, 14 years later, and here we are. I'm the opposite. I never thought I was going to get done. I'm about to hit 19 years. When do you hit 19? In November. I'm almost at 20 years of stand-up. I tell you this, I never thought in my life I was going to make it to 20 years of stand-up. Just, yeah. I just just never thought that, I, I even as an open micer, because when you start micing, you don't know, like you, most of us, we don't know what an MC is, a yeah. guest spot, a feature, a headliner. I didn't you know, know nothing. nothing. If you would have told me 19 years ago at the Why Not Lounge when I stepped on that stage that I would be the godfather of Orlando comedy in the next 18 years, I would have said, I ain't even going to be here in 18 years. Yeah. Like, I I, I never would have would have thought that I would have be there. That's why I asked you in 14 years that you think, hey, man, what I, what I, am I still going to be doing comedy? Because you don't really... And it goes by so fast. It goes by so fast. It, it, it really does, man. Like, when I meet a young comic... And um, they're like, man, I can't wait the headline. I said, well, you've been doing this six months. I said, you're going to blink, and it's going to be five years, and you'll be featuring. Yeah. I said, but y'all be in such a rush. I don't know why y'all be rushing for, bro. It, it ain't, every, hey, that $25 ain't going nowhere, comedy, bro. The thing about comedy people, I don't understand how people rush, because like you said, comedy's not going anywhere. And comedy, I was just talking on the phone with someone about this today. Comedy has been paying the same amount of money since 1970. So that hundred dollars not going nowhere. That fifty dollars not going nowhere. The feature pay not going anywhere. It's gonna be the same hundred dollars in two thousand ninety eight. It's gonna be the same hundred dollars a show. Yep, yep. Hey, this this hey, it's the same amount of money we was making when Chris Carr came out. <laughs> yeah, they paid us the same amount. We used to be able to fill Chris Carr up, but now we can't because <laughs> gas damn near five dollars. Chris, how long are you in now? I'm seven. seven you think you think you would would have made it to seven years? Yeah. So you knew I, you was like like seven years ago. You was like seven years from now. I'm gonna still be in the game. Well, I, oh I, damn! I, you I, did. I mean, like a kid, did, like I really did didn't did think of like a time years. frame. I was thinking like, okay, I'm here. I'm gonna be in it for the long haul, however long that may be. So that's it's short, but that's pretty much the, it. So. What what year did you start? I don't feel like doing math. 2000. 17? Uh, 16, 17. 16, 17. Oh, that was just, that was right when I was leaving. Yeah. I caught yeah. you in like your last year when you was doing Austin's and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to help you regular there and then I, I left. Did. And you started here? Yeah. Well, I started in Palm Bay. I did a one night at a piece of joint, a Eugene um, Singleton. Oh, Dun Duncan J's? One of Duncan J's spots? No, it was Eugene. Eugene Singleton. He did, a, he had an open oh. mic at a piece of joint. I did one night there, and then two weeks later, I moved to Orlando. And then That's kind of what I did, except for my first open mic was in Orlando in 2010. But I was living in Palm Bay, so I used to drive like an hour and some change to do a, a coffee shop. Wait, wait. You ain't never go to I King Burger King, bro? No. <laughs> no. What no, Burger King was you at? <laughs> I was at, uh probably not. I was working at the one in Bayside Lakes. That was the first one that I worked at. It's closed yeah, down. I didn't, I didn't go down Bayside Lakes that much because Bayside Lakes was like new, new uh, as I was leaving. And coming yeah, I, my Burger King manager got fired for stealing. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that being said, we got to go to commercial break. We'll be right back. Real last, we're ready at 104.1. Back real ass, real radio 104.1. Your night cap of comedy. I'm Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Guys, do me a favor, go out to social media and make sure you follow us on all the social medias TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, all our videos there. And if you want to um hear us in podcast format, you can go to iHeartRadio, search real laughs, and we are in podcast format. Over eight years of shows, over a thousand episodes. So make sure you go check us out. Um Excuse me, I came got a question for you. Uh, Chris, you can chime in 
but you don't really make money doing comedy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I had a question, I mean, man. I, I was gonna put, I was gonna put this on Facebook, but I figure I'd run it through my comic friends first. So let's say a comedian has a gig, right? Mm -hmm. And the 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 person that runs the venue says, "Hey, I want a headliner, and the pay is fifteen hundred dollars." Okay. Right. For the headliner, just the headliner, the whole show, just for the headliner. Right. Okay. I ain't talking about everybody else. The headliner. And it's a it's a one nighter. It's a one nighter. Headliner okay. gets fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, the comedian hits you up, Akeem, and say, yeah. "Hey, Akeem, what you charge for an hour?" And you say a thousand dollars. He mm -hmm. says, "I bet. Do you want to do this gig?" Mm -hmm. Is that comedian obligated to say, "Okay, the gig paid fifteen hundred. Let me pay you fifteen hundred." Or yeah. is, does he get to keep the extra five hundred? No, they get. First of all, you shouldn't approach what they charge. You shouldn't ask what what they charge for an hour. You should come to them and be like, "Hey, I got a gig. It pays fifteen because you already know that's the cap. You know that's the most it pays. Anything else you say under that, or if you come at them any other way, it's shady. Okay, it's shady as hell. Now, right. if you know the gig pays fifteen and you know you can't headline. And you know you friends with the headliner, you can ask the headliner, hey, I got a gig that pays fifteen hundred. I was wondering if since I got you the gig, can I feature for five hundred? Or something like that. And then let the and then if you guys are tight, the, the boy is like, Yeah, of course you can feature. But to be there and ask someone what if you know the budget, and if you turn around and ask someone what if you know the budget, and then you turn around and ask the headliner to do a show. And then they give you under the budget. It's just shady to come out and pocket the money because you're not even doing any of the work. You're not even on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious of that because somebody hit me up to do a show. Yeah. And it was like, well, how much? I Can said, you message me in the chat who it was? Uh, and it, was a, it, was, it wasn't a comedian. It was some lady that you probably never deal with. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I just use comedian as the example. Okay. And the person was like, hey, uh, blah, 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 how much you charge? And I yeah. said, 800. Yeah. And they were like, well, what about an hour? I said, you want a whole hour? I said, $1,000. Yeah. And said, so, well, well, what about a couple of hours? I said, then you want a show show. That mm -hmm. means I would have to bring an MC, a feature, myself. Yeah. I said, so now we're looking at about, you know, 1600 to $2,000. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're looking, yeah. you know. First of all, I, I hope you weren't thinking I was about to do a couple of hours of comedy. Yeah. Well, like, you, like, you don't want that. And yeah, so did. that person was like, cool. And then I hit yeah. up another comedian that did the gig. And the other comedian was like, yeah, yeah, she paid me this amount of money. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if that's what the budget is, why not just tell me it's $1,400 to do it? Yeah. Why why do all of this? Hey, well, what do you, what do you make? Because like, they, they were trying to finesse you. I'm like, so if, if it pays that, I don't know why people just don't be like this way. I, I, I'm I, big on it. When somebody asks me, well, wait, what's, what you charge? I'm always like, well, what's your budget, bro? Yeah, I do the same thing. But sometimes they finesse you. Like, I remember this happened. I can say this because this, this was two years ago. I asked to do a pride gig because uh, I'm gay, obviously, if you didn't listen to the beginning of this. Uh, I got asked to do a pride gig, and I won't say what pride, St. Pete pride, and <laughs> they reached out to me and they reached out to me through email and they asked me what my budget was to do the pride gig. I Googled it. It was a really big pride gig. At the time, I, I reached out to my manager, who I don't have anymore, and he would say, hey, you should you should ask for this much. So we kept going back and forth, ask, and I'm like, what's your budget? They didn't want to tell me the budget. So then I asked them, I'm like, hey, I'll do it for, I think I got six grand. I'm like, I'll do it for six grand because it's a pride gig. I knew these had money. I said that, and they immediately said yes. And then I'm, and I took the money. It was great money. It was, it was a very easy gig. I didn't have to do a lot of work, so it was, it was, I, it was a win for me. But I found out that my homeboy did it prior, and he got eight. And we have like the same. He has more followers than I do, but he didn't have as more. He didn't have the followers that he had two years ago. He didn't have. And he didn't even have late night because he did late night after me. So he got almost two grand more than what I got. And after I was like, oh, that's why they said yes so quickly. Because some I don't know, sometimes bookers try to finesse you and they keep that's why I always tell people to but whatever you whatever you whatever your real budget is, 
if it's a corporate gig or something like that, whatever your real budget is, either double it or add at least 500. Because to be honest, I'd have gig, I would have did the gig for four, but I was like, F it, I'll just say six and see what happens. And they said yes immediately because they could have did eight. But I mean, I still, I still won because I got a, I, that's a crazy amount of money and yeah. I did very little work. But yeah, I hate, I hate when people aren't like upfront. Just say what your budget is. That's yeah. I'm still learning the whole process at all. So, I mean, I'm still trying to get paid regularly. Did you, so. did you, are you going to do the gig? Nah. I keep, I keep, I tell them once, once we go back and forth on some BS, I always tell them, um, I'll be, um, I'm booked. Yeah. I'm always like, ah, oh, sorry, I'm booked that night. If we gotta, if we gotta go back and forth like that, and you just won't be honest with me about the money, I hit you with the I'm booked in, yeah. in a heartbeat. What, like the fifteen hundred? Was it just for, like, I mean, for the show? Was it just for you, or was it like? Wait, when no, it was just, it was just me this month. It was for Veterans Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was um it was just me. And now I've been approached for but I've been approached by at least 10 people for Veterans Day. Yeah. And 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 a lot of them want a free show. And I'm like, really? you know, I don't my the only the only show my charity show is the toy drive. Yeah. I said, but if if all these if people paid to get into this gig, I, somebody need to cut me a check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I've had one lady hit me up. I gave her my price. And she was like, "All right, I'll, I'll let you know." You know yeah. what I mean? But 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 the one person that hit me up, it was like it was so many back and forths. And I like I said, I knew somebody else that did the gig, and I'm like, "Well, I know if you paid that person that, why not just be like this? Is what we pay, and, and and just roll with it." You know what I'm saying? Instead of like you said, trying to finesse me out a couple hundred dollars it's to save so, a couple hundred dollars. It's so grimy because it's our, we are already wildly underpaid. I mean, granted, on the extreme side of it, we're crazily overpaid, but on the it, it's two extremes. But we're wildly underpaid as a whole. Like, obviously, there's the the twenty percent of comics that are making millions upon millions of millions. But like regular comics that have been on TV a few times and like and do it for a living, we are wildly underpaid. So it's like, dude, just pay us. Like, you have the money. Yeah, and that's my thing. You have the money. That's the thing that makes me mad is you have the money. You have the money. Yeah. So, but now I don't, I, I'm definitely not doing that one, but it was another lady reached out to me for Veterans Day. And uh, I was like, maybe I'll do that one. Uh, but I'm not doing anything for free. Yeah. You know, I get a lot of those. Hey, man, what are you going to come through, man? Do I'm like, here's my price. I'm nah, My favorite, though, I don't know if we had this conversation. When somebody asked me to do an event last year, and I and I quoted them fifteen hundred, and they said they can get Tiffany Haddish for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hell you can't. <laughs> I know Tiffany personally. You cannot. I said you can't get Tiffany Haddish's opener for fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, like I was I know, like, yeah, I know her personally. We're not best buddies, but I know her well enough to know that you cannot fifteen hundred. Yeah. No. Yeah, and, and the person was like, Comments getting paid like that? I said, yo, she a multi-million. Now, you thinking Tiffany Haddish getting $1,500 a show? No, Tiffany Haddish wasn't doing $50, $1,500 a show before Go Girls Trip. Bro. She was getting paid more than that before before she got super famous. She was getting that and when Chris Carr came out. Probably. <laughs> 15, is, 15 is base pay for people who, who aren't like super famous. Base uh, pay for a weekend is twelve to fifteen hundred. Hundred percent, and 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 I don't. Uh, people are shocked at that because yeah. they're so used to comedians coming to them with some low ball, like so, like you know, it's it's going to be a comic out there, but like I do it for two hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be a, but and they're not going to be better than us. And that and you're going to get a two hundred dollar show. Yeah. But that's why we can never unionize because there's always some there's always some really bad open micer who's willing to do a gig in Kansas City for twenty eight dollars and a drink ticket, and <laughs> and that's what they're gonna get paid. Yeah, that's such an odd number, bro. <laughs> I know. I don't know why it's at twenty eight. But... <laughs> Chris, have you been Chris? You, so Chris DJs. Chris, have you how how has it been negotiating your DJ pay? 
The same, the same, because it's like I do a hundred an hour, which is very cheap for DJ. Because for starters, it's like usually seventy five to a hundred an hour, and once someone asks for like, hey, I want a DJ for this amount of hours, I throw in my price, and then it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna go find another DJ. It's like, all right, bet. They pretty much want someone to to DJ the same price as a Spotify account. So it's like, yeah. yeah well, that's the thing. Like, you get you pay for quality. So yeah. if you want to pay a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or something or these very low rate prices. Right. You're gonna get a bad quality show, whether that's a DJ, whether that's a photographer. You want to pay two hundred dollars for a photographer? You're gonna have picture. You're gonna have pictures yeah. of unfocused. You're gonna have pictures with the, the finger covering the lens. Right. You're gonna, you're gonna have like sound. You, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. And then you're gonna be mad and be like, I can't believe my I can't believe my wedding pictures came out terrible. Well, you paid two hundred dollars, and this and he got his he's got his camera from the back seat of Chris's car. Like it's not. <laughs> that, car, that camera came out in two thousand. So, of course, your pictures are gonna be poor, Lori. Like, use a, uh, use a Nokia camera phone. So yeah, people, people, people are always trying to finesse. I, I hate it. They're always trying to get a deal. The just pay what the what just pay. If you want a good show, you gotta pay good money. Yeah, pretty much. And, and just tell me what it is. Yeah. yeah. Just be like, hey man, I got a, I got a, I got a four hundred dollar budget, and I'm always like, okay, so your budget four hundred dollars. I co- I come through. I I grace you with thirty minutes for yeah. four hundred. Now, if you want longer than that, here goes a, here go a list of comedians that'll probably do it for that. Yeah. But the where I met now, and now five years ago, I came. I wouldn't have said that. I would have took the four hundred. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, also, if you if you're just upfront with how much money you got. And you get a comedian at the right time, like for instance, me right now, because September is dry. You, you like right now, someone hit me up. I was like, "Can you do a one? If you could do a, a gig that's local to me, and I'll give you five hundred dollars." Normally, I'd be like, "Nah, I'm not doing that five hundred dollars." But currently, because my calendar is so light, I would probably take that gig. But you just got to be honest with me and be like, "Hey, this is my budget." And and sometimes you might get a deal. Like sometimes you might because there is a word when Tiffany Haddish would do a gig for fifteen hundred. There is if she likes the people, if she's friends with them, if she happens to be, if it's a cool location, she's like, I wanted to go to Hawaii anyway. You're gonna pay for my flight to Hawaii, put me up in a hotel, and it can be fifteen. Of course, like those were those those spaces where these big names will do gigs for less money. But if you come at them correctly, and if it happens to line up with the tour. Or if they happen to be like, oh, I wanted to go here anyway or whatever, there's a chance that people will do that. Like, I'm sure people have said yes to Orlando, the improv in Orlando, solely because they wanted to go to Disney. Yeah. And they didn't care. And they're famous enough, they're Patton Oswalt or something, and they're famous enough that all the shows are going to sell out. And they're like, I just wanted to go take my family to Disney. So I said yes to Orlando. I mean, yeah. Gabriel Iglesias did it before. When he did um, Fluffy, when he did the improv, I remember one day... He had a one out of there and it sold out. And then he, po- I was there with Ian Bag, and him and Ian Bag are really good friends. And that's when we met. And I was like, "What are you in town for?" Because he was there the night before. He's like, "Oh, I just booked the gig to come to Disney with my family." So he literally just booked the gig in Orlando, to come <laughs> to Disney. Because- that was nice. Pay for that Disney trip. Exactly. <laughs> because if you think about it, G- Gabe is at the point where he doesn't have to do clubs ever again for the rest of his life. But he wanted to do Orlando Funny Bone improv or whatever because he wanted to come to Disney. So like those those times where really famous people will do these gigs if it worked out with their schedule. But you just got to be up front with them. Got to be up front. All right, we got to take a commercial break, man. We'll be right back. Real last, we're radio one hundred four point one. We're back. Real last, we're radio one hundred four point one. Your nightcap of comedy. I am Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. James is out. He's hanging out with his wife. Miguel's working. Uh, Kaufman is on a flight. Actually, just landed. He hit me up, but he said he don't think he's going to make it home in time. So I'm joining the virtual studio with Akeem Woods and Chris Alexander. Guys, do me a favor. Go out there and follow us. Facebook, Real Last. Instagram, Real Last. Um, YouTube, Real Last. Everything, Real Last. Go follow us. Go subscribe to the YouTube pages. And if you missed any of these shows, you can go to iHeart, search Real Last, and you got over a 1,000 episodes in pod cast format so make sure you check it oh, out man snap. um so we had a death today a rest in peace 
James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones passed away. Lion uh, King dude. The Lion King dude. More than that, but the Lion King dude. <laughs> So I, I'm going to go first because y'all know if you guys know him the way I know him. So I want to know your three favorite Jerry, James L. Jones movies. Okay, so I'm going to go first. My number one is going to be Coming to America. My number two is going to be Lion King and Chris. My number three is going to be Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was the dad in Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. So those are my three favorite James Earl Jones movies. So, Chris, I'll let you go next because I came over there still thinking. Okay. Chris, I was going to say Lion King. Wasn't he in Darth Vader? Yes, he was that. Yeah. He, uh, Star he's, Wars. It's not Darth Vader. That ain't the name of the movie. It ain't. It's called It's called Family Matters, not Steve Urkel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, you know how black people are. That was going to be my second one. And then I was also going to say um, Coming to America. All right, all right. What you got, Chris? Uh, it's pretty much the same. Coming to America, Lion King, and uh, Star Wars. Which is crazy because he's he's like a he's Tony crazy. Award winning actor, a, a, a Academy Awards, and we know the three 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 movies. Yeah. <laughs> I seen the three play movies. Fences. Have you seen the play? Like this, first of all, he should he should get just get Oscars for his life. Because if you're born in 1931 in Mississippi, oh, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It just yeah. to come from the, the mud of that and live to be 93 years old. You got to think what this man done seen, bro. He's seen a lot, especially in Mississippi in 19. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, he's, for real, almost, like, as, he's almost as old as uh, Chris's car. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a lot older, 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 older. James Earl Jones is the first person to own Chris's car. That yeah. is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy, man. Because right, when so I was reading up on it, I came, I was like, dog, like when you think of like him and Cicely Tyson, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all these older black actors and actresses that, that yeah. came up through the South, the Jim Crow during the 30s, 40s, 50s, like to... to, yeah. to Get They'll through all of that, it. you know what I'm saying? To get through all of that, bro, and, and to come out on top is insane to me, bro. 1931, Miss. That means from 31 to 51, he was living in Mississippi as a kid, as a growing up to, to be a teenager. Like, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> like, I, I would I would wish that on nobody. No, I would wish that on nobody. No. Nah. Not at all. Not 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 South Mississippi. Not the not Mississippi nah. in the thirties. No, I wouldn't. Bro. I wouldn't wish Mississippi on people now. <laughs> and it's it's twenty twenty four. So yeah, oh, man. So I was just curious to know what was y'all. What were your favorite movies? And I, I knew somebody was gonna see Star Wars. And I knew Coming to America, and I knew Lion King because that's pretty much what all black people know him from. So I put up this movie. I put up this uh, movie list, and I just remembered. Seeing the list, he was in the Sandlot. Sandlot, yeah, yeah, he was Sandlot. Sandlot's a good. That's like my son's one of my son's favorite movies. I never saw Sandlot, but saw boy, Sandlot. gone somewhere. Oh. And me, you know, I haven't seen a lot of things. Sand, Sandlot is that movie, bro. You and gotta Meteor watch Man. Sandlot. And what? Meteor Man. He was a Meteor Man. Yeah, he was the dude with the toupee, and at the end, he took it off. He threw it. I don't even know Meteor no, Man like that. What is Sandlot about? Some kids playing baseball, and then they they knock the baseball into James Earl J uh, Jones uh, backyard, yeah, yeah. and they got to go retrieve the ball. But he got this big ass dog, yeah, they so they around. spend their whole yeah. summer trying to get this ball. They go swing the stuff the kids do in the summertime. Yeah, and you know, then and then they get old, and you know it's at the end of the movie when they do. Where where are they now? You know what I'm saying? Okay. And the kid that got the ball. Is like a major league baseball player. Spoiler alert. I'm not gonna watch the movie. You nah, know. Years old. You know yeah, yeah. Sandlot, Sandlot, my movie. I forgot. What else he in, Chris? Uh, shoot. a whole bunch of Star Wars movies. Man, uh, you just pulled the damn movie I list up. Away. Uh, what's? Oh, let me go back to the beginning. Conan the Barbarian. He okay, 90... I remember. Him. He was 93 though. Good for him. That's crazy. yeah. Feel the dreams. Uh, I ain't seen October, that. Or okay, October. I seen that. Uh, Claudine. I seen that. Uh, Great White Hope. 
Dog, talk about with um no you talking about the original, right? Yeah, Great White Hope. That's the that's the real not the Great White Hype, the original. No, 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 no. no hope. The one from like the 70s, right? Yeah, 70s yeah, yeah, yeah. Hype was like 90 something. Yeah, hype was um um Damon. Right. Uh Patriot Games, best of Seen the best. That. a family thing. I, uh, Fantasia 2000. A bunch of Lion Kings. Yeah, yeah, we done. All right, that's yeah. good enough. Shout out James Earl Jones. Chris can't read. Rest in peace, James Earl Jones. Rest in peace, uh, Chris's reading skills. Yeah. It was never there. And <laughs> hey, rest in peace, Chris Carr. <laughs> God. 2004, right. rest in peace, Chris Carr, man. So, I can't. What you been up to, brother? We got you on, man. How's how's things been going for you? How's trial of tales? How's the road? What's been, how's, how you been, kid? I've been good. I mean, things are picking up. It's one of those months where I auditioned for three things and got no for three things. So it's just like you know how that is. Uh, I'm working on a. Sh I'm writing a show with a friend, and I think I haven't gotten no from that yet. So. <laughs> I've been touring a lot. I did a celibacy month. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't fun, but I have to say that. Bro, but you did you last the whole 30 days? I did. Oh. Yeah. Did you share yeah. What story about? And then I immediately broke it in San Francisco. I can't tell you that story on air. <laughs> we don't want to hear it. Yeah, no, I but it's, it's, it, I just posted it on my top tales. Akeem Woods yeah. uh is the Instagram if you want to listen to it. Um San Francisco was fun. That's one of my favorite cities. I always sell out of merchandise in San Francisco. Have you have you done shows out there? Um, no, no, LA, San Diego, and that's it. And you know, I hate LA. LA yeah. owned me. I hate that city when it comes to comedy, bro. I don't blame you. I mean, I've had some great shows there, but I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. But um, San Francisco is amazing. Some people don't like it because sometimes they're like really, they're really like politically correct or whatever. But I'm a gay black dude, so I can say whatever I want. So, yeah, San Francisco. Wait, is, that a, is that a Cali thing? Because I feel like a lot of most it's a of the Cali shows I've been in LA was super, uh, super sensitive, super politically correct. I I felt like that, and I'm like, this kill on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, it's a Cali thing. I mean, it's a West Coast thing. So how are comedians surviving out there if you can't say what you want to say? I mean, you can say what you want to say. It's just like if you're go if you're performing for the nor for normal regular comedy goers, then it's a bit more PC. But if you have a fan base, it don't matter where you are. Your fan base is your fan base. So it don't you're just gonna, it's going to be like it's going to be a California version of your fan base. So it might not the jokes that you get that probably normally get like massive applause. It's still gonna get applause. It's not to the same level that it might get in so in DC or something. But you'll get like you'll get like Gaffy has a joke about it. You'll get that San Francisco laughter where they'll laugh and then they'll feel and then they'll feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what Gaffy he has a joke about it. But yeah, so yo, that's hilarious, man. So what's going on for you in the future, man? What you got? You got anything coming up that you want to um, talk about? I, I don't have anything or that I've, you're allowed to talk about. Yeah, you know, sometimes, the thing, sometimes they like, yeah. I can't, like, the things, the two things that I'm waiting to hear back from, I don't, I could probably talk about them, but I don't want to risk it. And I also don't like talking about things that are, like, still pending. So, uh, tour dates are always Um, I might be doing, like, a gay cruise ship gig in, like, a few weeks. Not a few weeks, uh, in November and October, but it's already sold out. It's, it's, a, it's a boat full of gays. Um, but there's nothing crazy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still working on this, this idea with someone. I'm doing some stuff with Angela, uh, in a few weeks, uh, Angela Yee, we'll do it. I'm probably going to co-host a radio show some, some, some in a few weeks, just like you're seeing me on that or hear me on that. If you listen to, uh, I don't know what network she's on. I should know. Cause I'm a regular on that. Yeah. Show. If you're about to co-host. <laughs> well, I've co-hosted numerous times, but anyway, but it's iHeartRadio. It's wherever, uh, Angela Yee, it's the same network that the breakfast club is on. Yeah, so um, 4.5. Yeah, there it is. That's where she's oh, at. Yeah. And I should know that. But um yeah. but that's it. I'm just working on this hour. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this hour. I really want to tape something this year, either a half hour or hour. I want to release <laughs> some type of special this year. So that's kind of the goal. Um, is to release some type of special this year. Okay. I don't know what platform, I don't know 
what capacity or where I'm going to tape it or anything like that. I just know it's something I want to do. So, but like you, if, if say no, a platform doesn't pick it up, are you thinking about maybe dropping it yourself, like a YouTube, like like a lot of comedians are doing now, clip it up, or you want it to be like it's my special? That's the thing. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. No, yeah. because I feel like now it's it's not special anymore. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are shooting an hour and put in and and clip it up. Yeah, and and just post clips. It's not like oh my god, I just saw this. I just shot a special for HBO. I just shot my um, member of Premium Blend had the thirty minute specials. Comedy Central had thirty minute specials, and HBO had hour specials and Showtime and Stars and 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 you had those things. And now I just feel like now it's Netflix, but yeah. Netflix ain't giving no regular dude. You know and I saying? feel like people are just recording them who shouldn't be recorded. Like I have a there's an acquaintance that I know, and he's been doing comedy maybe four years, and he's posting all on social media. Like he's like, I'm, my, I'm filming my special next week. My special next week. He's been doing comedy for me. I don't even think four. I think he's at three, maybe three and a half. I'm like, bro, you've been doing comedy for three and a half years. You're not filming a special. You're okay. doing. You're going on stage for thirty minutes or an hour, and you're filming a set that's probably okay yeah. but it's not a Cause, special yeah because most comics for you guys listening dumb dudes was 10 15 years in before, before they, they filmed the first hour yeah. hour but now it's like excuse me i go to some i go somewhere and i got 150 people in there and i'm about to drop i'm about to do some comedy that i ain't worked on i ain't practiced i ain't do yeah. a little bit of crowd work, get some crowd work videos, chop it up, and start releasing it. And that's they call it their special. And yeah, it's because this clip, it's because this this social media clip economy. It's like everyone is doing these two clips a week and blah 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 blah. blah. So it's like the, it's more pressure than ever to just keep feeding the algorithm. So people, like you said, people will film a special and they'll just they'll post it on YouTube, but then they'll just use it to clip, 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 clip. And most people don't even watch the special. They see, they just see the clips on the Instagram. I was like, oh, that's a funny clip. I was like, yeah, well, watch the hour special. And it's like, nah, I'm just going to keep watching the clips. <laughs> well, we got to get up out of here, man. Uh, we got to get up out of here. Akeem, you got anything going on this weekend? I don't have anything going on this weekend. I'll be in New York doing spots around the city. So if you follow my Instagram, Akeem Woods, A-K-E-E-M, Woods is on Instagram. I, I don't post my New York City dates on my website. But if you click on my stories, you'll see where I'm going to be at in the city. It's going to be like New York Comedy Club, The Cellar, uh, West Side Comedy, one of the comedy clubs. So I'll be at one of the comedy clubs this weekend telling jokes. Uh, so you can get tickets to that on All right. stories. And so make sure you check out Chris every Tuesday, V Pizza Karaoke Night. Uh, every Tuesday starts at 7 p.m., 85, 86 Palm Parkway, Orlando, yeah. Florida. It is family friendly. Chris, what you got going on this weekend? I got another DJ private gig going on, so just yeah, no. I may share some pictures and so forth, but nothing really I can give out. So. Yeah, yeah, all right, man. And then this Thursday, downtown Orlando at the corner, it's all for the money comedy show. It is the back to school edition. Myself, Miguel Colon, Jr., James John, and Jeff Kaufman with special guest Ali Flores. You can go for um, allforthemoney.com to get tickets. And then this Saturday, I will be at the five year anniversary comedy show, Curtis Brateman, straight, straight foolishness, straight foolishness with an eight. Make sure you check it out. Five years. It's Majestic Life Youth Event Center. It is a clean, family-friendly comedy show this Saturday, 8 p.m., so make sure you check it out. Uh, Ken, thanks for kicking it with us, man. We appreciate it. Um, Chris Alexander here. I'm Ken Miller. We will see you guys tomorrow night. Chris, do me a favor. Tell them what to do. Kick your ass to bed. Good night. Oh, I thought you had a sign-off. <laughs> that is the sign-off if Chris was a little more excited.